Any talk of the Illuminati normally begins with a man called Adam Weishaupt. Adam Weishaupt was born on February the 6th, 1748, in Bavaria, Germany. At the age of seven, he enrolled in a Jesuit school, and the occult ideas that were taught to him from that young age stuck with him for the rest of his life, helping to form his worldview and ideologies. As he grew up, he also studied classic religion, which is a euphemism for Gnosticism and other ancient forms of the mysteries. Thus, by the time Weishaupt reached adult maturity, he was very well versed in the occult. When Pope Clement XIV abolished the Jesuits in 1773, Weishaupt went on to become a professor of Catholic canon law, a post that only Jesuits had ever held up until that point, and within a few years he had joined the secret society of Freemasonry. Now, when Adam Weishaupt joined Freemasonry in the 1770s, it had already long been a fully occult society, but it was organised into the telltale pyramid-shaped knowledge hierarchy. The masses or muggles at the lower end of the society were completely ignorant of the true nature and meaning behind their doctrines and rituals. It was only as they rose through the degrees of esoteric knowledge and moved closer to the all-seeing eye of Lucifer at the top that the truth or so-called light of Freemasonry as they see it, began to illuminate their minds. I use the past tense, but it's the same today. In the Scottish Rite version of Freemasonry, which is the most widely known and practised, there are a minimum of 33 degrees to ascend through in the hierarchy, with still more elite Illuminati degrees, such as the Shriners above that. Those in the lower degrees simply have no clue that they are part of an organisation that ultimately worships Baal, Asherah and Lucifer. Even those relatively high up are misdirected. And even Christians have been ensnared in the organisation believing it is compatible or even complementary to their faith. Weishaupt, however, was no such muggle. With his Jesuit background and knowledge of the mysteries through his studies of classical religion and Greek philosophy, he was well aware of the origin of the doctrines and rituals of speculative masonry. Therefore, on May 1st, 1776, just three years after the Jesuits were formally shut down, he attempted to form his own elite secret society within a secret society. He would base it on the exact same principles and techniques of the Jesuit order. He would try, and largely fail, to recruit ex-Jesuits as initiates, and would call this order the Order of Perfectibilists. In time, they became more famously known as Ordo Illuminati Bavarensis, or the Illuminati for short. The Illuminati means the Enlightened Ones. These were to be an elite group made up of only those at the top of the Freemasons pyramid. They prided themselves on their intellectual superiority and depth of insight over the average man, whether Freemason or not. Incidentally, Weishaupt's name literally translates as the man to lead those who know. The word Adam means man, the word Weiss means to know, and Haupt means leader. The Illuminati were basically the Jesuits reincarnated under a deist or secular guise. When Weishaupt approached ex-Jesuits to join the order, he baited them with the promise that they would recover the influence which they had formerly possessed. He imbued the Illuminati with the exact same ideas that had pervaded the Jesuit order, those characteristics we associate with Jezebel or Asherah. Like the Jesuits, the aim of the Illuminati was nothing less than complete power and control, most worryingly of all, they retained the core mantra that would justify any number of atrocities, that the end justifies the means. The end, in the case of the Illuminati, was the complete destruction of all Christianity, the overturn of all monarchies and the creation of a new world order. The Deists, Freemasons and Illuminists recognised that kings and queens derived their temporal authority from the spiritual authority of the Pope, and that he effectively controlled monarchies from behind the scenes, just as Nimrod and Samiramis maintained control of their empire through perceived religious authority, monarchs in Europe looked for the same kind of confirmation from popes to maintain control of their own lands. Their rule was not legitimate unless the Pope said so. Therefore, in the eyes of the populace, there was this inextricable link between monarchies and the corrupt Catholic religious system. And it was this joining of the church and the state, the temporal and spiritual, that had brought so much oppression and wickedness. The solution for the Illuminati, therefore, was to separate church and state and to destroy both in the process. Christianity would be shut down and the monarchies who derived their legitimacy from the Pope would have to be overthrown. There would need to be revolution. This is effectively what the Illuminati set out to achieve. 
Professor John Robinson, a Freemason who claims he was approached by the Illuminati to join the elite order, wrote in his book, Proofs of Conspiracy, in 1797. The Illuminati were conceived, organised and activated by professionals and intellectuals, many of them brilliant but cunning and clever, who decided to put their minds in the service of total evil. A conspiracy conceived not by Masons as Masons, but by evil men using Freemasonry as a vehicle for their own purposes. I have found that the cover of a Masonic Lodge has been employed in every country for venting and propagating sentiments in religion and politics that could not have circulated in public without exposing the author to great danger. I found that this impunity has gradually encouraged men of licentious principles to become more bold and to teach doctrines subversive of all our confidence in the moral government of the universe. I have been able to trace these attempts made under the specious pretext of enlightening the world by the torch of philosophy. I have observed these doctrines gradually diffusing and mixing with all the different systems of Freemasonry till at last an association has been formed for the express purpose of rooting out all the religious establishments and overturning all the existing governments of Europe. The primary goal of the Illuminist is to get the possession of riches, power and influence without industry, and to accomplish this, they want to abolish Christianity, and then universal profligacy will procure them the adherence of all the wicked and enable them to overturn all the civil governments of Europe, after which they will think of farther conquests and extend their operations to the other quarters of the globe. Just a quick interjection to point out the important statement made that abolishing Christianity would lead to universal profligacy. This is still true today. The spiritual temperature of a city, nation and continent largely depends on the spiritual temperature of the Christian church. If we find our culture falling into wickedness, it is probably because our churches are failing. While just our mere presence on the earth is slowing the rate of decay and acting as a barrier to Satan, we have been told to be salt and light. How salty we are will preserve morals and standards in our society, and how brightly we shine will determine the kind of place we live in. We need to shake off apathy and fear and learn how to be both salt and light again today. John Robinson then goes further explaining, An association has been formed for the express purposes of rooting out all the religious establishments and overturning all existing governments. The leaders would rule the world with uncontrollable power while all the rest would be employed as tools of the ambition of their unknown superiors. Robinson is describing an occult hierarchy here. A few elite, illuminated ones ruling over a mass of muggles, except this time it's on a global scale. Weishaupt was well aware that Freemasonry was the perfect vehicle for the Illuminati, simply because of its secrecy. He says, The great strength of our order lies in its concealment. Let it never appear in any place in its own name, but always concealed by another name and another occupation. None is fitter than the lower degrees of Freemasonry. The public is accustomed to it, expects little from it, and therefore takes little notice of it. Next to this, the form of a learned or literary society is best suited to our purpose, and had Freemasonry not existed, this cover would have been employed. Freemasonry was chosen because the public already knew about it and thought it harmless. Its origins as a trade union for craftsmen meant the average person thought nothing of it, and this was the perfect cloak of cover.